I've condensed my entire maker's process down to like eight steps. And I learned best by seeing how other people do things. So I figure that I'd show y'all how I do things so maybe it'll make life easier for at least one person out there. I'll be making a physical product in this video going over how much time I spent during each step as well as how much I would sell this product for at the very end of the video. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Step one. Identify your product. That's actually a lot harder than you would think. So let's go ahead and talk about the three different types of products that you'll be making, starting from the hardest to the easiest to identify. So the hardest is something to sell. What I've found works best for me is to identify a niche that I already enjoy. So something like a hobby or something that I'm interested in that I already used products to be able to pursue those interests. You're gonna be focused on how much do I need to sell this for? Can I ship this thing? How much is it gonna to cost to ship? What types of customers are actually looking at this? So your marketing, all that type of stuff as well. So the first is gonna be selling. Second is going to be creating a product that is a gift. I would say this is like medium difficulty as far as uh, creating a brand new product. I would look at the person that you're trying to create a gift for. So if you've been around this channel at all, you've heard my neighbor Jack uh, cutting his lawn. He loves to do fly fishing. I would make a sign that says like Jack's fly tying table or something like that with a little trout in it. Boom, there's his gift. So you find someone's interest, identify that, make something around those lines. I'm using signs as an example because I do CNC woodworking and that's by far the easiest thing to do. Now, the easiest product to make is to fix a problem in your personal life, which is what we're gonna be doing today. You identify a problem in your life and then you create a product in order to fix that problem. You're not really focused on what exact materials you need for it. You're not really focused on how much it's gonna sell for or ship for. You're trying to alleviate some type of an issue in your personal life. So let's go ahead and head over to the house and see what type of issue we're trying to fix today. This right here is my silverware drawer, flatware drawer, whatever you want to call it. This thing, every time I shut it, you heard everything move around? So I need to be able to figure out how to create an insert that fully fills the cavity of this drawer while allowing me to organize all of my flatware in here so that it all stays nice and put. Step number two, product functionality. What does it actually need to do? For me, it needs to hold each one of these types of utensils. Uh, I also need it to hold these other things. There, this is what it actually needs to do. Hold these things. That brings us to step number three, measurements. Now that we know what it needs to do, we need to be able to measure each one of these components. Now for me, that's pretty simple. I go in, I measure each one of these pieces of flatware and I figure out where they need to go in the space that it is allotted for them to fit. Now that might be a little bit different when you're looking at something like one of my old projects like uh, this whiskey smoker here. That is something, it needs to be able to fit on multiple glasses. I first made that based on the glasses that I have. I wasn't creating this project so that it was the best product available, I was creating it so that I could create as many as possible at a single time so that it was creating less headache for me in the long run. So when you're thinking about your dimensions, you're not only thinking about is it meeting the need of the people, but is it also feasible for me to be able to create that in my own shop? I know a lot of my subscribers are makers, so you're in the same headspace, but if you're out there and you're not a maker, you're somebody who's wanting to follow a lot of these steps and then skipping a few, which we'll talk about later, and you're hoping to outsource or hire somebody to actually do the making process, that might be where you incur more cost. You don't understand like the tooling changes and the bed space and the allotments that each step of the process requires in order to create the final product. Therefore, you could get hit on the end with a lot more fees because as a maker, we understand the steps that are gonna be more difficult or more annoying or that we just flat out don't wanna do because making one and then making a 100 are two completely different things when it concerns making products in your own shop. When you're doing your measurements, think about not only is it meeting the need, but also is it actually going to be something that is repeatable to make or is it just this one off where it doesn't matter if it takes two hours to cut out because you're probably never gonna be making it again. Okay, so we have identified the product that we are looking to create, figured out what it actually needs to do. We figured out the dimensions of how it all needs to fit together. And now we need to figure out the actual material that we're gonna be making this product out of. Normally when you have the dimensions, you have a depth and that thickness oftentimes is going to determine what you're actually gonna be making this project out of. There are different materials that do different things in this world. Oftentimes wood is not considered the most uh, reliable or long-term uh, material to use for a product. 
So if you're thinking of things in the kitchen, you might be looking at stainless steel. If you're thinking for things outdoors, you might be doing PVC or some type of a plastic. Um, and then going into considerations of, is it going to be near water? Is it going to be near sunlight? Uh, who is actually going to be using this thing? Is it going to be near a baby? Are they going to be putting this object in their mouth? Is that material non-toxic? How are you going to be finishing your material, which we'll be talking about later? All needs to be thought of when looking at the material that you're going to be actually making your product out of. Design. Now we have stepped into this is what the maker is going to do as part of their making process, which is what I do. But if you're somebody out there who just has an idea and you're looking to have it made, this is probably the step that you're going to start outsourcing things and you might need to start asking a few more questions as you find somebody that is willing to create the product that you've designed. You might start asking a few questions like, how long is it going to actually take to make? What's the process that you're walking through? What are some difficult things that you feel like shouldn't be a part of this project? A simple thing is like a chamfer on a piece could create a lot more difficulties for the actual person that's making it that'll cause it to be much more expensive for you in the long run. Think about those things as you're doing the designing. This is the software that I actually use to create stuff, and as you can see here, I'm just creating a bunch of vectors and then aligning them in a way that makes sense for the drawer that I have. This process is going to look dramatically different for everybody. This could be a simple five minute process or it could take five weeks or five months depending on what you out there are making and that is going to incur cost associated with the amount of time that you're designing. If I myself am designing, it's gonna be cheap because it's my time. If I'm paying somebody else to design this, it's gonna be very expensive depending on the time that they're putting into this and especially make sure that the design that they're putting forward is complementing the actual making process. I know I'm mentioning that a lot, but that can really screw you in the end because you might have a very fancy design that does not translate very well when it actually comes to creating your product. Which brings us to number six, actually making it. So for the makers out in the world, this is where you're going to be taking your design and actually going into the shop and physically making this item. Whether that is one item or a hundred items, doesn't matter. This process and the time associated with the process is going to be completely different for everybody depending on what you're making. This is just my steps of what I go through in order to make a project. This is how long it actually took me. I used my CNC machine. I cut a bunch of pockets and then that is the rough outline of what that actually looks like. I came back with a palm router and ran over all of the outside edges. It's alleviating that hard 90 degree turn right there so it just doesn't bang up our knuckles when we're actually using this thing. To me, this is just the easiest way to make this, so that's what I did. So now that we've made it, let's go on to step number seven, which is finish. There are a lot of things to talk about when concerning finishing to your product. Now, sometimes you might have a raw material that is already finished and it is good to go. That's awesome. But you need to think about, is this going to be near water? Is this going to be near sunlight? Is this going to be near children that are actually going to be putting it in their mouth? Is it small enough that it actually could get swallowed? All of those things. So for this one in particular, I'm going to be using mineral oil, but before I do that, I'm taking it over to the sandblaster. What that's doing is it's taking out a lot of the mill marks that is just purely aesthetic at this point, and it leaves a little bit of a rough finish on the wood, which I like a whole lot, and it also looks great when you put oil on it. It is food safe, as well as it can be reapplied at a future date. There we go, we've got a full finished project. Let's go ahead and go on to step eight, which is implementation. Implementation is going to look something completely different if you're selling this product, if you're giving away this product, or if you're using this to solve an issue in your personal life. Just for a second, let's step back and talk about this product itself. If somebody sent me their drawer dimensions, A, I'd probably say no, but B, if they're really pressed, uh, at minimum, I'd be charging $100 for the design process. At minimum, I'd be charging $100 for the machining process, and then I'd be shipping it to them. So let's just say at minimum, it's $220 to be able to make this for them custom and send that to their house. So if you're somebody who's looking to outsource this product to somebody else and that's just a part of the cost that you add to your spreadsheet overall, but you have to consider a few other things as well like product pictures, marketing, as well as shipping, all that kind of stuff. There are a lot of people out in the world who create a product and then use some type of a drop shipping service and they never once touch the actual physical item and they make a very, very small percentage, but that can add up. Let's talk about number two, gift. So implementation of the gift, we would simply be wrapping it up and giving it to that person. It's very easy. Implementation, if you're fixing your problem, use it in your house. So you might create this thing, you might put it in your house, you might use it, you might find out in two weeks after use that it sucks, it's no good, you need to make it over again, or you might find a way that you can improve it. Now this is a huge thing that a lot of people overlook. When you're creating a product, 
maybe you're first starting off and you're just creating that for yourself. The more you use that, the more you're going to see the things that can be improved as well as the value that it brings to your life. So a lot of the things that I make on my channel and I sell digital files, you can check out the links down below, but a lot of the things that I make, I started off thinking I'm just making something for myself. I would use that thing. Is that thing actually any good? Could it be better? Now that thought process, sure, it takes a lot longer time, but if you're not in a rush and you're not falling in love with this product that you're making, it's not like the thing that's gonna change your life and you hold it very loosely off to the side, you can then objectively look at it and say, eh, that's not very good, this is a lot better. You can take that to other people, show that to them, say, hey, what would be your first reservations about this product? What are the things that you really enjoy about this thing? And that sparks an iteration process that can make a product that is completely different than the one you first started off with, but 10 times better in the end. So as you're looking to make stuff, it doesn't matter if you're trying to sell it, give it as a gift, or just making it for yourself, Think about the things that could be better. That can not only spark a version two, which you could possibly sell for more, but that could create something that in your own life brings a little bit more joy or a little bit more ease or just a little bit more understanding to the product that you're making overall. The barrier to entry into creating things and actually selling them online is so freaking low. Or if you don't want to actually create stuff yourself physically, you can still use these steps and you can use awesome services out there. If you go to my website down below, which hopefully will be available during this video, you can go to the merch tab. None of that merch I'm making myself. This is a coffee cup that I'm selling on my website. I'm not physically making that at all. I created all the designs, I uploaded them onto the thing, and I'm selling it for a certain amount of money, which I will get a very small amount because I just think it would be cool for people to have my coffee mug with my logo on it, and personally, I just want one myself. There's a lot of different ways that you can create products, you can put them online, and you can start making money. Don't tell yourself that you have to have all these tools, that you have to own the entire process. You don't have to have everything in the world in order to create something. You certainly don't have to know everything in the world in order to create something. If you're just starting out, go out, make something. Don't fall in love with the things that you make. Create stuff that brings you enjoyment that you think will bring some type of a positive influence into someone's life. Whether that's fixing a problem, a gift for somebody you love, or just selling product because hey, we all need to make money. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Hope to see you soon. Bye.